Well, here we are. This is the big event, I think, at Christie's uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, it's the sale of the Ann and Gordon Getty collection. I don't think it's everything that they own, probably most likely not, but the, the, the situation is is that uh, Ann Getty passed away a few years ago, a year or so ago, and um, uh, Gordon is there and he's got this house and he, I guess he's going to uh, uh, readjust his lifestyle a bit. I don't know um, uh, what the, the circumstances behind the sale of all this stuff, uh, but uh, here it all is. I don't think it's because they need the money. But at any rate, uh, it, it's a it's a colossal auction. And, and you shouldn't just look at the Asian stuff in there. I know a lot of you are interested in Asian material. But check out the paintings and the other objects that were in the, in their home. It was an absolutely fabulous, uh, uh, decorated property. Uh, there are Degas in here, Cassats, Renoirs, you name it. Uh, there's all kinds of paintings, great furniture, English furniture, French furniture, uh, huge amounts of jewelry, uh, Anglo-Indian material. Uh, there's, a, there's a section in here with just stuff from India, the Middle East, textiles, all kinds of things. It's an absolutely terrific bunch of stuff. All of the estimates are not beyond the reach of everybody. There's some things in here that are going to sell for a thousand or two thousand dollars, and there are things that are going to bring millions, uh, which is which always makes it interesting auction. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the highlights, the things that we've seen. How it's running right now is that currently, um, the, on the they're doing uh, uh, six online sales, and this isn't for l low, lesser stuff. I, I think I think they feel it's just as efficient as doing it with a, with a live audience, uh, because there are things in the um, online sales that are going to bring well into six figures. Some very very valuable objects. Uh, the first the first parts of the sales are already up and running. They started yesterday, the tenth, and uh, you have uh, one, two, uh, three, four online auctions running right now. There's some that started also today, um, on the eleventh, and. Uh, then we have uh, uh, the live sales, which will take place on the twenty, on the twentieth, the twenty-first, the twenty-second, and the twenty-third. Uh, the uh, major uh, Ch Chinese works of art and English material is going to be on the twenty-second, uh, and then there's another uh, sale on the twenty-third uh, that's got uh, a lot of Asian art in it and uh, other material. They've mixed up some of it, so you have to go through the sales. The first sale that's online is all um, uh, uh, Asian, all Chinese and, and Japanese material. And then they've sort of smattered it out through some others. Uh, down here on the 22nd will be a live sale where they'll have some more. But you just have to go through it. You just have to go through the catalogs and, th and through the online um, listings and you know sort it out uh, however you wish. But uh, I would urge you, if you're in a position to participate in this sale, to do it. The material is all outstanding, and it all comes from, um, you know, very good sources. Um, one of the pieces, I'm, in the beginning here, I'm going to talk a little bit about the items that just caught my eye that I like so much. And one of them, the first thing I want to talk about is this uh, Cornelis Pronk um, 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 hand-washing cistern and cover. Um, the, the cis, this is a cistern. Um, it doesn't have a nozzle on it. The nozzle would go at the bottom here. Uh, an identical example to this, or a nearly identical example, is in the Peabody Essex Museum, uh, not far from here in Salem, Massachusetts. And uh, it was something I remember from a, being a, as a child, this jar impressed me. It, they had it on a staircase for a long time in the museum and in an alcove in a staircase. This is a big jar. It's around 20 inches tall. It's beautifully decorated, uh, and of course, by uh, designed by Cornelis Pronk, the uh, the uh, Dutch uh, uh, decor, the Dutch the Dutch uh, artist, and uh, it is 20 and a half inches tall. It's I think the estimate is is it seems awfully low. I don't quite understand the estimate. Um, uh, they have it estimated at just twenty or thirty thousand dollars. This is one of the uh, one of the real icons of Cornelis Pronk's work, uh, done during the Qin Lung period. Um, absolutely fabulous uh, piece of porcelain. So well, I'll be fascinated to see what this actually brings. Uh, the next lot I like a lot is this triple gourd Kangxi vase, pair of Kangxi vases, I should say. They are twenty-seven inches tall. These are huge vases. These are big boys and um, done in, um, uh, with Femi Noir and uh, so forth. Now, the, 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 some of these uh, Femi Noir Kangxi pieces are, that, you, that you see around are redecorated, re redone in black. Uh, 
later. They call it later decoration. These don't appear to be, that doesn't appear to be the case here at all. These were always done in black with these, with these beautiful uh, enameled midsections and so forth. But 27 inches tall, just absolutely colossal. Now, Kevin, they've got a strong estimate, 100 to $200,000. And I think that's partly because they're not sure quite where to peg the value because it's, these are so unusual. Um, they were bought at uh, Christie's in 1998 at, at an estate sale. All right. So we'll see how that does. That's those are absolutely wonderful. And then next up is this this Kangxi Femi Ver vase. I just love this. The colors, the enamels on it are so strong, so vibrant, um, beautifully done all the way down. Just this great scene of the beauties in the boat, and uh, fine detail, fine colors. Nowhere any place on it that I can see. It looks to be in absolutely superb condition all the way up to the top. Um, the lid, I'm assuming, is fine. You want to check if you're interested in this to call in and get the uh, information on it. It's decorated fully in the round, as you can see. It goes all the way around. And again, it's just as good looking everywhere, no matter how you look at it, all the way around. The blue enamels are crisp and bright. Uh, the, the, the reds are strong. The greens are vibrant and clear. They're not muddy or green, uh, you know, olive drab color at all. They're pure color. Uh, just pure colors, just beautifully, beautifully done. And uh, this is a pretty good sized jar. It is uh, uh, 21 inches tall also. A lot of, they like big jars. They like big objects. <clears throat> We're gonna get to a pair of cloisonne cranes that are uh, over eight feet tall that are coming up that'll be in this sale. And uh, again, a big jar and uh, estimated at 30 to 50,000. Seems reasonable to me. Um, and then on to this. This, this, these are, this pair of uh, jars, they're late Ming, early Qing Dynasty, gilt splash bronze jars with covers. Uh, if, if, you, if you're into Chinese bronzes, you want to check these out. Um, uh, this is, these are extremely rare um, uh, to see bronzes at this size. They're 12 inches tall. These are not small bronzes. 12 inches tall, done with gilt splash. Uh, very, very rare. You know, typically you, you only see gilt splashed on these bronzes. Mo well, not uh, only, but most often on incense burners, small objects. Here they did them on two substantial looking jars. Uh, really, really handsome, striking pair. Uh, Twenty to thirty thousand dollar estimate, which seems very, very reasonable. They're probably from the Kangxi period, possibly a little before, um, uh, but uh, absolutely splendid. Uh, and if, if, if you like bronzes, uh, you, you've got to have to check those out, maybe go after them, I suspect. And then the last thing in the group, these, these are just my, my personal favorites. It doesn't mean it has to be everybody's personal favorites. But is this uh, Ming Dynasty lacquered Wan Li table, an extremely rare type. The, um, the lacquer on it, if you pull it in, is this very, very fine speckled uh, business. So there are only a few of these tables known. Um, um, uh, 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 was it Wang Shichang, the, the famous Chinese furniture book? He, he has one illustrated in it. And there's another one out there somewhere that um, has a Wan Li mark on it. Uh, this one is unmarked, but very, very rare. And the thing that's nifty about this is that it, it's, 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 for, it's, for, it's for drink, it's a drinking table, basically a drinks table, um, is the condition of it is absolutely outstanding. Um, uh, uh, even down on the feet, when you get down around the feet, you see very little wear on the feet of this table, which is very unusual. Um, they look to be in great condition. Um, the legs, the table shape itself is, is done sort of in the form of a, of a vernacular table, a, a provincial table. Most often you see this in sort of common woods um, when, they, when they shape them this way. This one, they lacquered it which is quite a difference, but uh, it's not, it's not um, uh, what people often think of when they think of formal Ming furniture but on its style, but more, more of a, based on a country piece, but uh, absolutely spectacular. And um, it's estimated at 100, 150,000. And with the strength of furniture over the last uh, couple of years, this could do well better than that, I suspect. Um, it'll be hard, you don't know until it's over, but it's one of those things that could really take off. And then these, um, a beautiful pair of, of, of gilt bronze Kangxi period um, uh, uh, pots that have been uh, clad uh, with French, French bronzes. I'm assuming they're French. Yeah, French Hormaloo bronzes. Uh, da, da, da. Um, how tall are these? These are pretty big. Yeah, they're 14 inches tall um, each. These are wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, cash pots. They're shaped like, um, uh, they're shaped like uh, in, uh, uh, brush pots 
but uh, beautifully done. And it's interesting because the, the um, Getty Museum out in California has a, the family has always had an interest in this material because the Getty Museum itself has a considerable number of um, Ormolu mounted um, uh, Qing Dynasty prominent, mostly porcelains in it. Um, uh, and the, the family was really interested in that. It, it goes well with French furniture. And so there's quite a bit of it in the museum. Much of it's been published. And it seems that uh, Gordon and Ann also had an interest in this, this type of material. Uh, this, this particular one uh, came from uh, the Baroness Burton, who died in 1962, um, uh, through Jack Partridge, legendary dealer in uh, London for many, many years. I don't know if, if some, of you, some of you have been around for a while and know who Jack Partridge was. He was one of the top, top dealers in the world. Um, not just in England, in the, in the world, he handled some um, some of the, the finest of all kinds of art, uh, English furniture, Chinese art, uh, paintings, you name it. Jack Partridge handled it. All right, he's sort of like Peter Chalou was here in the United States for many years, but that, that level of dealer. And then over to this, this is uh, exceptional. It is a very, very, very fine Qinlong to Jai Jing, um, uh, 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 I, I mean, Jai Jing, rather, Markin period stupa, porcelain stupa and Famille Rose. But it's big. This is a big stupa. It is uh, 19 inches tall. Um, it's got a wonderful wooden stand with it. It looks to be in absolutely superb condition all the way up and down. The, the little Buddha figure and Famille Rose is still inside of it. Uh, the, the, the base is fabulously well done with these brightly colored lappets. Fine looking conforming stand underneath it. All the way up to the tippity tippity top, with the flaming, the flaming uh, 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 cap is uh, all in, you know, all gilded up. Be just great. Estimated at two to three hundred thousand dollars. It is mark and period, though you have to keep that in mind, and uh, is absolutely of the period. It's, you know, it's it's just one of those things that's going to do awfully well. I suspect it hasn't been in the market in a while. Um, it was acquired uh, from South uh, Christie's last time around. It was sold was thirty years ago in 1994, and this also is going to play in heavily to the to the values. Uh, nearly all this stuff was was bought uh, from 1994 or before. So it's, it was bought back uh, uh, a significant period of time ago, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And uh, that always helps a great deal. This is the pair of cranes I was talking about. Uh, these are uh, 91 and a half inches tall, which is uh, 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 just a hair under, they're just a few inches under being eight feet tall. Uh, spectacular quality again, uh, beautiful condition. They they date them just. I think they just date them as Qing Dynasty. They look Qin Lung to me, uh, but boy, the workmanship on these is great. They're, they're so delicate, and look how they've survived. Um, uh, if you're thinking of buying them, a check on the shipping though, because it, it might be worth your while if you're in the United States just to drive out and pick these bad boys up. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's see, they've estimated eighty to $120,000. They, they're dating them as 18th to 19th century. So they're, they're, what they're saying is they could be, they're either Qin Lung or Jai Jing period. Because a lot of stuff from the Jai Jing period looks like Qin Lung material because the workshops that made for, for the Qin Lung Emperor were still making stuff for his son's period as well. So a lot of the stuff um, uh, visually overlaps, I think, is, is the best way to think of it. All right. There are lots of things on the market that if they didn't have Jai Jing marks on them, they'd probably be dated as Jin Lung. All right. And then uh, there's another section of sale come out. And as you see here, this is just how it is. This is this is the Asia sale. I think this is the online sale that's going on right now. Yeah, this is the online sale that's active right now. It is just a, an entire auction of just Chinese material, watercolor paintings, paintings on silk. Um, animal forms, human forms, uh, another triple gourd vase, uh, Kangxi triple gourd vases, is lamps, um, lots of figures, uh, these these night and day dishes. It's funny, I, 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 there was a, a night and day dish came up that I talked about a few weeks ago in another auction. Well, here's a pair of them came up. Now, the one that was in the other auction, just as a reminder, I think it brought <clears throat> between $1,100 and, and $1,400 or something. And th these are estimated very modestly at five to 800. So um, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're absolutely viable. There's no big reserve to fight there. 
uh, and and the, most most of the items don't seem to have big big estimates or big reserves in a lot of the categories. Um, I think the, the re they really want this stuff to sell, uh, so uh, uh, jump in. Um, over here, there's a lot with about, I don't know, it looks like 47 pieces of Kangxi porcelain, all in one lot, estimated at four to $6,000. <clears> um, and then you have more China trade material, lots of figural stuff, lots of statues, lots of Emil Rose statues. Um, and figures, birds, phoenixes, and all that. They loved animals in human forms in porcelain. Uh, and you'll see a lot of it. You'll see more of it here than you, you'll, I've ever seen any place, actually, uh, all, in, all in one series of sales. Uh, the next thing I wanted to point out was this, a really nice, uh, uh, oh, made around 1800. They call it late 19th, 18th, early 19th century uh, China trade painting. Uh, it's uh, depicting a silk shop. And, but the, the quality of the painting, if you pull it in, is just absolutely fabulous. And the quality and the condition of the painting, <clears throat> excuse me, is nearly perfect from what I can see. Um, I don't see anything wrong with this. It's crisp. It's clean. It's nice. The colors are bright and strong. The facial expressions are good. Uh, lots of details. You can see them here working on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, a couple of pieces of silk weaving them and mending them and doing what fitting them whatever they're doing estimated at five to eight thousand uh, dollars but what a great painting what a great painting and all matted and ready to go and then another one of these trumpeter things a couple of weeks ago there was an example of this porcelain this is another cornelis pronk attributed uh, thing with two moorish musicians on a black ground and uh, there was one that was in another auction on ebay or live auctioneer sometime in the last couple of weeks and um it did very well and it had been broken it was a cup and it had been broken and, 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 and extensively repaired and that that brought uh i don't know 1500 to 1800 dollars or something so this the the five to seven thousand dollar estimate for the bowl and saucer and probably not restored uh is is a good price but even even with these things always got to always get a condition report and then there are numerous pairs of these uh chinese uh, export uh cranes they, they got on a real buying binge with these things and i think there are six or seven or eight pairs of these birds in the sale all estimated in varying ranges from from 8 to 12 10 to 15 15 to 20 and then of course that monstrous pair that we had which was at an estimate up in six figure land but they were cloisonne and they were enormous and hot, unbelievably rare uh and this one was uh let's see this particular pair of birds was bought from john sparks um over in the uk uh, back in the 1980s and that again, John Sparks is another one of these great old old school dealers like Spielman and Spinks and all these places that handled such fabulous material for so many years, 100, 100 years, 150 years. And then over to this, uh, there are numerous pairs of uh, Chunlung period uh, figures like these of women, um, uh, very formal, very elegant. Uh, these are 11 inches tall. There's a couple in the sale that are in the 16 or 18 inch range, as I recall. Um, this one has, of course, been mounted on a Rococo base, French bronze base. Let's take a look. There we go. And you have the phoenixes uh, to each side, and these wonderful bases made for them. And beautiful, beautiful, beautifully done porcelain, of course, to 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 to, to sit on top of them. Uh, estimated at twenty-five to forty thousand um, dollars. That's what they sell for. That's sort of the range for them. And again, another. Or you're noticing there's a bit of ormolu mounted stuff in here. This is what I was referring to when I was talking about the Getty Museum. The the uh, uh, Gordon and Ann Getty apparently liked the material a lot, and they and they bought these. Um, Let's see, they bought these in 1993 in New York um, uh, at, a, at one of their decorative art sales. They're estimated at 150 dollars to $250,000. They are uh, uh, beautifully done with um, uh, celadon and underglaze blue with uh, white flowers and underglaze red uh, vases that have been ormolu mounted. Uh, absolutely superb quality, absolutely the best. Uh, Pull it in, take a good look at them. Uh, the, the underglazed blue looks nice on them. They look, they, they, they're probably chin lung vases underneath there, I would guess, uh, but they might be a little older, but I don't think so. I think they're probably chin lung, judging by how the feet are shaped. Um, let's see, 13 inches tall, all right? And uh, 
uh, they have a inventory uh, number on them and all that stuff from the collection. And it's, you can't overlook the fact, too, that if you buy these and you keep track of your paperwork, which you should always do if you can, uh, th these are the kinds of things down the road that when, when you go to, if you ever went to sell them, and you can, you can cite where you got them from, uh, the, the, the Getty collection is about as good as it can get. All right, here's a pair of uh, figures that were bought in 1994 by Ann Getty. These are uh, eight feet, eight, 18 inches tall. Great big pair of uh, female uh, 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 nodding ladies. And these are the ones that have the uh, heads that move around a little bit if you, if you nudge them. These are not, known as nodders, and uh, the, the heads float on these little pivots. And uh, beautifully done, lovely blue ground. I like, and also they detailed... If you pull it in this in very close, you, from a glance, it looks like the, the robes are just light blue, but they're actually light blue with um, highlighted cloud decoration all through them, and then uh, and then red enamels, um, uh, you know, in the cartouches and so forth. But very good facial expressions, beautifully done, and estimated at fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. All right, another pair. Again, same circumstance, twenty to thirty thousand dollars. These are sixteen inches tall. Very, very well known form and type, made in the Chunlung era. And then this pair of Kangxi jars. These were bought from Marchants back about thirty years ago. Uh, they are seventeen inches tall. Um, they're estimated at twenty to thirty thousand uh, um, dollars. These are really, really pretty, beautiful colors. And uh, the red ground on them really, really sets them off. Uh, very fine enamel, nice translucent blues, aubergines, and so forth. And uh, they look like they're in wonderful shape. Okay, there you go. Now, what else? Uh, oh, the set. This is this is great. This is a, a pretty rare. Yeah, uh, some of you may you've seen these this these forms before. These 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 bottle forms and these jar forms. Well, here they all are. This is a full set. These are garnitures. And uh, they, they visually they look like they're sort of small, like they're four or five inches tall. These are actually, uh, I think they're over twelve inches tall, right? Um, Eleven and a half inches tall. These are pretty big jars, and the the estimate is seems to me to be insanely low. Um, eight to twelve thousand dollars for six of them, which which there's so which, what it says is they're estimating each piece at about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a piece. Um, I think as a complete set, they, they should do much better than that. But if you if you love these, they're almost khaki, look like khaki Amon decoration. Um, when I first saw them, I thought maybe they were Japanese for some reason, the, just by the color and the decoration. But uh, if you are uh, uh, inclined towards these, you like this is your taste. Uh, you, you're not going to find another complete set of these. I think for a long time, you might find them in some auction over in France in a couple of years, but. Um, th these are the kinds of things that don't typically turn up very often as a complete set. Uh, they were bought at the Chait Gallery in New York uh, back many, many years ago, um, and then uh, ended up at Sotheby's in 1992, and they were bought from Ann and Gor by or Ann and Gordon Getty again 30 years ago. And that, that's um, where these things have to come from these days, things that were bought a long time ago, put in collections, and um, ready, you know, ready for a new owner today. And then this, this uh, late uh, 15th, 1480s, 1490s jar, very interesting, uh, 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 scrolling um, uh, uh, lotus, lotus vines and these wave patterns around the top. It's 14 inches tall. Um, it was bought from, let's see here, it was bought in 1995 at Christie's and uh, acquired by Ann and Gordon Getty from the above, means they bought it at Christie's. Uh, this is a nice looking jar. Um, pull it right in here, let it load, there we go. Uh, it's got some staining on it and so forth around the midsection, but uh, very typical of this period, this kind of work with the, with the, with the dominant blue background and the, and the decoration all in white. Uh, very handsome, uh, do they, what else do they give for pictures here? They, oh, they're showing all three sides, there you go. Uh, estimated at fifteen to twenty-five thousand um, dollars. Again, very reasonable. Uh, Fourteen inches tall should get there pretty pretty comfortably, I would suspect. All right, and then over here another stupa. There's a, several stupas in this sale, incidentally. Uh, this is a Chin Lung example, estimated at sixty to eighty thousand. It's all cloisonné and enameled. Um, oh, how big is this? Uh, Twelve inches tall. It's a foot tall. Uh, really nice quality, very soft color palette, uh, beautiful egg yolk yellow ground on the uh, mid on this first section. Uh, the stepped base is uh, the, the cushion base, cushion form base, 
with a light blue background, very finely worked all the way down to the bottom. The gilding looks like it's in good shape. I don't see a lot of rubbing to it. Uh, it, it just a good example all the way up. Uh, Sixty to eighty thousand dollars Chin Lung period. It's not marked, but it is Chin Lung period. And then this this little peach form imitation fossilized stone uh, box. Uh, these are very very unusual. It's marked on the bottom in red. Uh, but here's the uh, here's the circus uh, surface this faux bois sort of decoration this you know uh, like like a trompe l'oeil painting uh, and and these, these were wildly import uh, in, 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 uh, popular with the Chin Lung Emperor he he loved this they did all kinds of forms and shapes and containers and jars and bowls with um, uh, this sort of decoration. Uh, and uh, the, these will probably do very, very well. They're estimated at thirty to fifty thousand uh, dollars. The mark on the base is uh, right there. It's hiding. It's, it looks like it's hiding. It's not really hiding. There it is. Uh, it's all you need to know. And the, the bottom of it looks good. You can see. You can see where the decorators went over the went over the base a little bit over the unglazed uh, foot rim um, with the enamels in here and there, which wasn't that uncommon. That sort of thing happened when they were being worked on. And uh, as I said, thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and then the jade uh, garniture set, five-piece altar set, uh, a, a beautifully done on a metal gilt metal stands. They measure twelve inches tall, um, and again, not something you see very often. A complete set of these these altar pieces, beautifully carved, all the way across. I love the I love the uh, the big one in the center, the centerpiece, and then the pricket sticks on the ends. Very nicely done. Uh, and they're not broken as far as I can tell you if you're a jade buyer you want to check them out make sure they're in perfect condition uh, but they date them as either Qin Lung or Jai Jing period uh, or they're, again they just go 18th to 19th century um, it was bought these were bought at Sotheby's uh, over uh, over 20 years ago uh, and they're estimated at 60 to 80 thousand dollars and uh, then the last thing I want to talk about is this for the transitional wear buyer um, uh, the, the transitional pot with ormolu mounts on it, uh, Regency mounts, nicely done, very, very nicely done. Uh, these very soft, soft blue palette. And uh, they dated these uh, as being 17th to 18th century. That's all I would say about it, which means they're, the, the, you know, they're calling it late, they're calling it transitional period, Chongqing period. Um, you know, circa 1650, 1640, something like that, with uh, 19th century mounts on them, I'm assuming. Um, now, let's see here. The mounts, Ormolu, oh, the Ormolu mounts were put on in 1725, roughly. They, they, they must have examined them and dated them even earlier. So nice early bronze mounts, nice early pot, uh, good size, measures around 8 inches tall, 9 inches tall with the, with the Ormolu. And uh, we'll see how that does. But this is just a taste of what the sales are going to be like. This is, it's, it's, it's almost too much. It's almost too much. And sometimes when it's almost too much, maybe, maybe there'll be a buying opportunity for, for somebody. Uh, but go in there, and um, all I can tell you is leave bids on all the lots that you like uh, if they're within your price range um, uh, because it's a chance to buy great things from a great collection. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, with great provenance and um, it's very powerful it's a very powerful sale uh, all of it the all 10 auctions are powerful and strong uh, great looking things and I think you'll I'm very, gonna be fascinated to hear what the total is uh, it's obviously going to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars how many hundred million I don't know four to six hundred million something like that three to five hundred million maybe more um, it depends heavily on the the the, the top end material or what are really going to drive it the paintings the european paintings and so forth are going to add enormously to the gross of this sale and there may be some in there that'll that'll blow away their estimates and that'll have a massive impact because there's so many other there's so many things in these sales it's just it's just crazy and if there's some good jewelry by the way if you're if you're thinking of buying your wife some jewelry for christmas go over and check out the jewelry the jewelry stuff the indian jewelry um the, the estimates aren't crazy and uh, absolutely the best absolutely the best okay thanks for watching and uh, uh subscribe if you haven't here already and uh, we'll see how the sale does it'll be exciting all right bye-bye